Today's stuff we're going to be learning is Gitin Daf Pezayin. Reminder to everyone to please register for the CIUM, the separate registration. If you want to come to the live event, it's to email Erica Schwartz at Erica Schwartz number six, Erica Schwartz six at gmail.com. And if it's to come to the Zoom CIUM, so the link is at the top of the homepage and the usual link to register for Zoom. Okay, with that, we're going to get started. Looking forward to seeing you all there. We're going to finish this Masechet. We have a really good lineup of a program. We have two women finishing Shas, um, and we're going to see some real live cases from my husband, Rabbi Seth Farber, who's going to talk about some actual cases that happened in the rabbinic courts that connect, and he's going to connect it with Sugiot that we learned during this Masechet. Okay, we're going to get started from the bottom of Pevav Amabet. We have a Mishnah where it said, it talked about the difference between a klal, if we have a, a bunch of people giving a get to a woman, to their wives, in one document. And now the question is, according to the Mishnah, we have, if it was given, they wrote a general uh, language, or if they wrote tofes, if they wrote tofes for each one, which we don't really know what this means yet, it's invalid, only the sign if their signature is only at the bottom, Wherever the signatures follow, whatever section, it goes by that person for that person only. All the other people, it's not a valid get. But if they wrote this general, again, we don't really know what it means by general. We'll see that in a minute. Then it actually works for all of them. It just you have to have each husband give that same document to each woman. So now the Gemara starts last two lines of Pivab and Mubet. What is this klal? It's the case of tofes. He says it's all about the date. If you have one date, then that's all one thing. There's one date and the adim sign at the bottom, the witnesses sign, they sign on the whole thing. If you have separate dates for each person, he got divorced on this day, he got divorced, he's divorcing his wife on this day, he's divorcing his wife on this day, then it's no good. That's called tofus. Okay, that means each part is a separate part, which means you can't have a get like that. It doesn't work that way. So now we're going to see, and that's Rabbi Yochanan. We'll get back to it soon. Rish Lakish Amal, he has a different explanation. Afilu's kulam nami have tofus. Even if you have just one date, it's still a problem. What's the issue? Elahechi dami klal. So for him, what makes it one document that works that we can assume the signatures were referring to the entire document? You need one general sentence that says, we, okay, a bunch of us got together and we're all divorcing our wives. Okay? And then when the Adim sign at the bottom of that, it's clear they're signing about all of them because it says this one sentence that combines all of them together. Obviously, it also has the rest of the content of the get, but the point is it has that one important sentence. We're now going to have some questions against Rabbi Yochanan, and then we'll go to question against Rish Lakish. So he raises the following problem. The fact that Rabbi Yochanan said one date means, if it has one date, that's a general document, which means that they're really all together, which means that if the Adim sign, it's signing on the entire thing. Maybe when the witness is signed, they're really referring to the very last line, the la or the last person who got divorced in that list. Why would we think that? Milo Tanya does it not say in a bright shalom beget pasul shalom You ever get a, a receipt from an organization, a nonprofit, and then somebody writes, hand writes on the receipt, you know the person, let's say, who runs the nonprofit, and they write a note saying, thanks so much, regards to the family, sign their name. So if you have a get where there's Shailat Shalom at the bottom, and the witness signed, oh, regards to your family, sign their name underneath that, that signature cannot count as a signature for the get, because there's a concern that maybe you only signed on the part you wrote, send regards to the family. That's what we mean by Shailat Shalom Beget. So if there's Adim, if the two witnesses sign underneath this thing that says send regards to your family, well, that's Pasul. Okay, I'm just giving an example of send regards. Could say anything, right? But it's somebody added something at the bottom of get, and then the witnesses sign underneath that. So if that's the case, if we're worried that maybe they signed on Sheila Shalom, maybe here we're worried that maybe they only signed on the last person that was listed in that list of people divorcing. 
To which the Gemara says, what do you mean? That's not a question. Love it marala. Was it not said about that source, about Shelat Shalom, about the, the greeting at the bottom of the get? I'm a Rabbi Avau, the Didim of Farshim and Minye de Rabbi Yochanan. I heard directly from Rabbi Yochanan, who was the one who said this in the first place about what the concern is here. Um, I heard directly from him that Sha'alu, sorry, one second, Rabbi Yochanan, sorry, it's not that. It's Rabbi Yochanan, who are Rabbi Yochanan here that we're questioning. He specifically told me about the Shelat Shalom, Sha'alu Pasul, Vishalu Kashim. If you write some regards to your family and sign at the bottom, we can't count that signature as a signature on the get, even though it's underneath the whole get. But if you write and send regards to your family with a vav in the beginning, which means and, then you're obviously connecting between the get and your comment, which means that when the witness signs at the bottom of that, he must be referring to the entire thing. So if that's the way Rabbi Yochanan explained that source, obviously he's going to explain the same thing by us. Ha-hanami, likewise here, Dichtiv be ploni uploni uploni. But it must say here, him and him and him, meaning, right? And he divorced her, and he divorced her, and he divorced her. And because of all the ends, it connects them all, and therefore it's not an issue. That was question number one against Rabbi Yochanan. We resolved. Vitu. And furthermore, another question. The Rabbi Yochanan da'amal z'man l'cholachad zeu tofes, ma'ir yamishum tofes. If each one has a different date, so it says he divorced her on Sunday and he divorced her on Monday in January, whatever it is, and he divorced her on Tuesday, if you have it like that, well, why do you have to say it's disqualified because of Tofes? That they're each separate documents and we don't know which one the witness signed on, or the witness, we can assume maybe he only signed on the last one. But there's a much bigger problem here. This is a classic case that we saw in the Mishnah before, which is disqualified. If it's written during the day and signed at night because the date it was signed is not the same date that it was written. So if we have the Adim sign and there's different dates for different people, obviously it's a disqualified get because it definitely could, can't possibly be that the witness signed on all those days. So you'd end up with a document where the witness signed on a day that wasn't when the get was written. And therefore, it should be disqualified for that reason and not because of Tofes. So Amr Le Mark Kashisha Bered Rachis the Rabashi. Now we're going to fine tune Rabbi Yochanan. This is what they say in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. What they, he meant here when we say it ha, if it has a date for each one, it doesn't mean a different date for each one. It just means that it listed the date for each one. So it said on Sunday, June 14th, this person divorced that person. And on Sunday, June 14th, this person divorced that person. That already would be a problem because of Tofas, not because of Nechtam B'yom and Nechtam Balayla, because presumably the witness is signed on the day of all the get gets, because all the gets were given on the same day. And that resolves that question. Okay, so before we get to the question, let's just review Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan says, if what's Klal, you said so-and-so is divorcing so-and-so, and so-and-so is divorcing so-and-so, and so-and-so is divorcing so-and-so, could go on. With one date at the top, aid them signs at the bottom, that works. As soon as you have separate dates for each one, even if it's all on the same day, it's going to be a problem because of Tophis. Okay, that's Rabbi Yochan. Now we get to Rish Lakish and the question on Rish Lakish. So Rish Lakish said, you have to have this general statement. We all decided we're, you know, we all divorced our wives. This one, right. And then it says, you know, we, blah, 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 these people divorced our wives, these women. And that would work. If there's Adam signed at the bottom, that would be okay. But if it said he divorced her and he divorced her and he divorced her and he divorced her, no can do. We assume that Adam only referred to the last one. So comes Rav, Ravina. Amale Ravina le Ravashi. Ravina asked Ravashi a question about Rish Lakish. Le Rish Lakish de Amal, according to Rish Lakish, who said, Zman echad kulan, nami tofes, if it had one date for everybody, it's still tofes. Because remember, he said it has nothing to do with the date. What is klal then? Right, what do we learn? It said, That's as we said, right? So they say, we, these people, divorce these women, but we're going to have a problem with that. You basically have wording of one get, because it's all these men divorced all these women, that's like one get. 
And you can't have a Torah Amra v'katavla below la v'lachaverta. The Torah says you have to write it for her, not for her and her friend. So this language can't possibly work where it's a bunch of us decided to divorce a bunch of women. First of all, who matches up to who is a good question, right? Is that clear? This doesn't make any sense. To which the Gemara answers, it must be, or Ravashi answered, Ravina, it must be the Hadar Katav Ploni Geresh Ploni to Ploni Geresh Ploni. We now realize that when Rish Lakish said you need this general line, all these men divorce all these women, that's important so that with the Adim sign at the bottom, they're basically signing on one thing. They know they're signing about this general get. And they're referring to, their signature refers to everything in the get. However, it's not going to work just by doing that because there's a separate problem of giving one get to two women. So what do you have to do? You have to write this general language. Then you write and he is divorcing her and he is divorcing her and he is divorcing her, obviously fill in the blank in the names, right? Joe is divorcing Jane and right, this one's divorcing that one and so on and so on. So now, again, we're fine tuning exactly what Rishla Kish said. We're now understanding it a little bit differently than we thought before. Amalei Ravina le Ravashi. Ravina now says to Ravashi, Umay shna mehad detanya hakotev kon nechasav l'shnei avadav kanu umeshacharin zeetze. Ravina now says to Ravashi another question. How is this different from the Brita that says, if you write, okay, now what we're, we're basically questioning is not Rabbi Yochanan, not Rish Lakish. We're questioning the assumption we just made in the previous question, which is you can't give two women one get. To which they say, but wait, it says a kotev kol nechasav l'shnei avadav kanu umeshacharin zeetze. If you write all your possessions to two of your slaves, presumably we mean in one document, you say, I'm giving you all my possessions to two of his slaves. Kanu, they each acquire their, their all of his property and each of them becomes half free because he freed them both, except that each one owns half of all the possessions. So each one is owned by the other and therefore meshacharin zeetze, they each now have to free the other so that they can be totally free. Now, what do you see here? It seems like it's one document and yet it works. Now, what does that have to do with the get of a woman? Well, we already learned because of the word la that appears by uh, uh, a non-Jewish maid servant and because of the word la that appears in the Gerushin case and in divorce, we're going to learn from one to the other and what's true for one is true for the other. So if it's true that you can you can ex um, free both these slaves in one document, you should be able to free two women with one document as well. To which the Gemara says, why are you asking a question for that? It's not a question at all. Did they not say about that source that it was talking about two documents? Okay, so what we did so far in today's daf, we ex explained what Kalal and Tophis is. According to Rabbi Yochanan, according to Rish Lakish, we had two questions against Rabbi Yochanan, one question against Rish Lakish. And then the last question was based on a certain assumption that the Gemara wanted to question, but resolved. Now we're moving on, but staying within the same topic. We're going to have a brighter to support Rabbi Yochanan and a brighter to support Rish Lakish. Tanya Kavate de Rabbi Yochanan, Tanya Kavate de Rish Lakish. Both these sources are going to have Tanakama, who's basically going to support the opinion that this bright is coming to support. And then there's going to be another opinion in each bright. So here's the source like Rabbi Yochanan. Hamishash Katvu Betochagit. Ish Ploni Megaresh Plonit. U Ploni Plonit. U Ploni Ploni. Notice they have the N. And this one divorced this one. And this one divorced that one. And this one. But with one date for all of them. They're all kosher get gitin, right? It's all one big kosher get because they all have signatures on it. And you give to each one of them. If there was though a date for each one, each one had its own date and the agent were at the bottom. The one at the bottom that the agent could be read with. That is good, but the rest are not. That matches perfectly with the way Rabbi Yochanan understood the distinction in our Mishnah. Rabbi, as I mentioned, there's going to be another opinion here. Rabbi Yehuda ben Betera Omer, im yesh revach benehem pasul, the im lav kashir. If there's some empty lines in between, then it's no good. Okay, this is like when you go to an Excel document and you do the sum and you want to do a sum of a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of, uh, what do you call them, uh, cells. So when you do the sum, it automatically catches the last number of cells you have. And it works based on page break, uh, space, right? When there's an empty space, 
it'll say if you're doing a whole bunch of cells and there's a whole list of them, but there's an empty space in between, it won't catch those when it does the cell. Because once there's a space, it already delineates that this is separate from before. So now Rabbi Yudah ben Batera says, if there's space in between each one, if it says he divorced her, and then there was a, a blank line, then already we can assume that the, the agent are not signing on that part. Ve'in love, and if not though, kashel she'en zman mafsika. Okay, he says the date doesn't really make a difference. It's just a matter, is there space in between them? Tanya kavate de rish lakish. Now we're going to bring a bride to the support. Rish lakish is reading. If they wrote it Kla, what is Kla according to Rish Lakish? We'll see right now. This Brighta holds just like Rish Lakish explains. Anu ploni uploni, gerashnu nishotenu ploni tu ploni. This is exactly how we said it. We, right, these men divorce these women. Ploni geresh ploni, and then you get into specifics. He divorced her. Uploni geresh ploni, then he divorced her. And one day for all of them, and the Edom were signed below. It's all fine. Because again, it had that general language. But if it had a date by each one, and it had space in between each one, and the witnesses are signed at the bottom, and the witnesses are wherever the witnesses appear, it's only on the previous section. Rabbi Meir Omer, he disagrees. He says, He thinks that the time also dis- distinguishes when it makes separate sections, even if it doesn't have an empty line. So again, this supported Rish Lakish. And now they ask a question. Rish Lakish, my area is man Why does it have to say zman and Ha-amal, didn't he say in our the way he explained our Mishnah, he said if there's man for all of them, then it would be a tofes. To which they say, okay, that statement where he said wasn't said as its own separate case. It was dependent on, on the following. That's only if they didn't have, and this is a different case, if they didn't have the general, and as it wasn't referring to the previous case, what it's saying is if you didn't have that general statement, right? So there's one option is it has that general statement. Then the witnesses sign, they're going to sign at the bottom of the whole thing. So, but, in the case where you did put this one, sorry, I said it before a little bit wrong. It's not its own separate case. They thought this was its own thing. Forget about the general language. It's just if it had zman, the chol it would be separate. If not, it would be together. And that's not where Rabbi Lakish really holds. So what do they say? It depends. If they all, they didn't, you didn't have all the names together, then it's not going to be, work no matter what. It's definitely a tofes for each one. But if you wrote that one general term, still it's dependent on time. E paliglu zman in ilo lo. If you had the separation of the time, meaning each one had its own date, then it would be fine. But if not, it's no good. Okay? So, sorry, the opposite. If you had Paligluzman, then it would, can't possibly be, it would have to be the opposite. Right? If, imlo, right? It would have to be that if you, let me just double check this. I'm not saying it wrong. Second. That Ipaliguzman, right? In is it would be considered the tofes. That was the problem. In sound like it's good, but in means just yes, it would be considered tofes. If it didn't have separate dates, then it would actually be fine. So you need two things according to Rishlakish in order to make it work. You need number one, that all the names, it all says together, we divorced, we the following people divorced these women. Then you need it also to not have separate dates for each. Then you need it, well, let's say the next. Then you need it to also say, and he divorced her, and he divorced her, and he divorced her, very specific. But you can't have separate dates for all of them. If you have separate dates, then it goes back to being a tofus. So that was, again, dealing with Rabbi Yochan and Rish Lakish. The last part we did was basically to bring a bright touch to support each one, and then ask this question on something that we just said in Rish Lakish. It doesn't really make so much sense, according to him. But we resolved that the Zman L'chol L'chav 
is another criteria for, there's another issue that could turn something into a tofas, even if you fulfill the other criteria. New Mishnah. Shnei gitin shektavan ze betzadze. You have two gets that are written next to each other. Okay, so you're going to have to visualize a piece of paper with a get on the right and a get on the left. Now, shnaim edin ivrim, two Hebrew writing witnesses, come mitachat ze letachat ze. Okay, they each sign one under the other. Ushnaim edin givanim, two Greek witnesses. This means Jews who come from Greece. Ba'im mitachat ze letachat ze. And they sign their name one under the other. So you have the first two lines have two witnesses signed in Hebrew. The next two witnesses signed presumably in Greek. Okay, there's a debate about how to understand this exactly. Rashi understands somewhat differently. We're going to go with the Rambam and others who assume that what we mean is in Greek letters, which basically means instead of going right to left, they go left to right. Okay, take English, right? Imagine you sign your name in English at the bottom of the get. So now the issue here becomes tricky because if we'll see later in a Mishnah, that if it's all one get, it doesn't matter that one starts on the right and one starts on the left, you can combine them together. The problem here is, again, this isn't Rasha's interpretation. Rasha has a different, the signing Greek means that you flip, instead of saying, it, my name is X, the son of Y, in Greek, the customary practice is to say son of, so it would be, you start with the father's name and then say, his son's name, and it's reversed. Okay, but let's move away from Rashi. We'll go with it's right to left and left to right. Now, assuming that if you go right to left and left to right, again, we're going to assume that we mean that you say first your name and then your father's name. If you have two gets and the signatures are going right to left and other signatures are going left to right, you're going to end up with, assuming the signatures kind of span the page, you're going to end up with, my name is this, son of my father, by the time you get to father, you're already underneath the other get. So that's not a good signature because you're underneath the wrong get. And the ones that go left to right are going to be right, going to be underneath the left one, but the right one is going to have their father's name underneath. So that's going to be create a problem. So therefore, they say the following. If you have two Ivrim under this side and two Yivanim on this side, etcha edim arishonim nitreimimo kashe. The one that reads well with the first two signatures is going to work, meaning the right-hand get has underneath the two lines of signatures of Jewish witnesses with their first name underneath, at least, right? So that's going to be a valid get. But meaning the one on the left is not going to work at all. We're going to have to get into the Gemara. Why not? Can't you just say the Greek signatures, which start with the first name, are underneath them, even though there are a few lines below? Maybe that should work. So we'll get back there. If you have one, it goes zigzag. One Hebrew, Greek, Hebrew, Greek. Each one is under the other. They're all disqualified. We'll have to wait till the Gemara to see what's the issue here. So first the Gemara says, Why don't we just say, if it's Reuven, son of Yaakov, so the right one will be kasher because it says Reuven. And the left one will be kasher because it says Ben Yaakov, which is also Reuven, the son of Yaakov. It might not be specific enough, but it should work. Dahatnan, how do we know that should work? Because it says in the Mishnah, Ben Ish Ploni Eid Kashil. If you say son of so and so, that and you say Aid is the witness, that actually works. To which they answer, no, well, it must be the Katav Ruven Ben Akama, the Yaakov Ad Eid Abat. What you end up having is it must be, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Reuven Ben appears under the, the right one. And when, by the time you get to the left one, you're only up to Yaakov. You don't have Ben Yaakov anymore. You just have Yaakov. And it's not Yaakov signed. To which the Gemara says, which is, kind of sounds like what well, we'll see in a minute, but Litkasher Hai be Reuven Ben. Litkasher Hai be Yaakov Eid. Why don't you just say Reuven Ben counts because Reuven, we understand it's Reuven son of. Okay, it's missing the end. But the other side should work because it says Yaakov. And it's as if Yaakov signed it. Now, Yaakov didn't sign it. It's a little weird. But we'll get to that in a second. What they're saying is, if you're coming as an outsider, it looks like it's an okay get. You don't realize it was Reuven, the son of Yaakov, signed. Even if it's just, if it's Yaakov, so okay. It says Yaakov, hey, that should work. Dehatnan, it says in the Mishnah, Ish ploni e kashil. If you just write your name without your last name, your your son of name, and you say aid, it works. So this Yaakov aid should actually work. So we have two answers why this obviously doesn't work. 
One is more obvious than the other, the second one. Dilo katev Eid, maybe you could say, he just wrote Ruvim in Yaakov. And since Eid wasn't there, it doesn't work if you don't have the word Eid, which means witness. Ibait Eim, alternatively, you could say, Lo olam v'katev Eid, udi adin abaya chatim adalav Yaakovu. It must be a case where he did write Eid, but we all know it wasn't. In other words, it would have to be a case where people knew that it wasn't Yaakov who wrote the get. And therefore, which is what we said, and what does it help with? It says Yaakov. Yaakov wasn't the one who signed the get. So since we know he wasn't in a, in a case where you know he wasn't the one who signed the get, no one's going to accept that get. Now, turning to Amubet. So now the Gemara says, um, Gemara says now, V'dilma b'shma de'avu Maybe he signed his father's name. In other words, you could say that maybe when Ruvain signed, he wrote Yaakov, and then Yaakov aid should work. To which they answer, what are you talking about? People don't do that, right? Again, this is human behavior. What can we expect about human behavior? People don't use, instead of their own name, their father's name. That's not how people sign documents. Maybe he used his father's name as a, as a siman, as a symbol. Do you remember this whole thing in the fourth chapter? Rav drew pictures of a, his signature was a fish. Rabbi Hanina Charuta, his was a palm, uh, like a palm, a, a palm date or a, a you know a, a palm from a date tree. Rav Chista Samich he used the letter Samach as a no, as a notation for his name. But Rav Oshaya Ayin, Rav Bar Rav Huna Tzir Makuta, he put up a sail, a picture of a sail. They each had their own simanim. Maybe he's using his father's name as a symbol. To which, again, we get into human behavior and expectations of how what people would do and what they wouldn't do. People wouldn't make their father's name into a symbol. But that's not, it's not respectful. Okay, so basically, there's no way to make this get on the left valid based on the first two signatures and the name of the father that appears underneath. That can't possibly be good. To which the Gemara says, Belit kashel hai b'shnei idim ivrim. Why don't we just say, get on the right goes by the first two. That already the Mishnah did say. Get on the left goes by lines three and four, which have the Greek ones underneath with the first name first, right? The, the person's name. That's underneath. The father's name is on the other side. We can ignore that. But there you have two valid signatures. And so the answer, did, ah, and here's their proof that it should work. Did none, it says in the Mishnah coming up, if you have a get written in Hebrew, but the witnesses sign in Greek, or or the gets written in Greek, but the Adim sign in Hebrew, it's valid. So there, it should work. You might say, but wait, there's two empty lines in between. And that shouldn't work. But that can't be a problem because Hamar Chizkia Miluhu Bikrovim Kashem. What's the problem with blank lines in a document? That someone could come later and forge something. They could add in that there's a condition to the get or something like that. They can do all sorts of things that could forge, you know, could be a forgery. But if they're filled in, like for example, this case they bring, what Chizkiah said, if you, let's say the witnesses sign on three and four lines underneath the end of the get. But if lines one and two are blank, it's definitely a problem. If lines one and two are filled in with signatures of non-kosher witnesses, like relatives, but there's two more signatures after that that are kosher witnesses, then we say it's totally fine. The witnesses don't have to be exactly under where the get ends. As long as there aren't blank lines, it should work. So in this case, there's no blank lines because there's two other witnesses signed on the right side underneath, right, which goes over to the left. So we don't have blank space, in which case this should work. So the Gemara answers, in fact, Zeiri says this actually does work. Okay, the, the Hebrew signatures under the right one make the right one a good get, and the Greek signatures under the left one make the left one a good get. However, why does it say in our Mishnah no? Well, Tana Didan, our Mishnah is concerned with a different issue. Dilma Gundali Chati. Bekulu Achad Hudachati. Maybe they signed it Gundali. Okay, what does this mean? Good question. It means they signed it in a messed up manner. Not really clear what this means. The commentaries have a lot of different explanations. As I said, even the whole thing about the Greek, there's different explanations what we're talking about. What it seems is that since the first two signatures are done in Hebrew and the second two are done in Greek, it could be that the Greek are going to write in Greek, but from right to left or something like that. They're going to switch maybe the order of the pair of the names. 
since the first two Hebrew ones are done, son, father, right? Son, my name, son of so-and-so. Maybe they'll start and put the father's name all the way on, uh, sorry, their name all the way on the right and the father's name on the left. They might write from left to right, but switch the order so that it matches up to the top ones, which would then again disqualify the get on the left because it would end up with the father's name and not that witness's actual name. And therefore it would be no good. Now we're going to get to the last section of this Mishnah. If you have one Greek and one Hebrew or one, one Hebrew, one Greek, one Hebrew, one Greek. So what do we say, right? This doesn't work. The Mishnah had said, right? If they're one after the other, they're both no good. So now the Gemara asks, and there's also some gears of problems here, what the actual text is. They're basically saying, why don't you say each are good based on one Hebrew, one Greek, one Hebrew, one Greek. So what exactly that means is a good question. Some people say that's not really what the question is. And it only has one part, which is why don't you say this one is good from one Jewish and one um, one Hebrew, sorry, and one Greek. Um, and not the second one. And what's the reason? Let's just explain in a minute. As it says in the Mishnah, as we're going to see in the next Mishnah, it says one written in Hebrew and one in Greek actually works. So why don't we say, and with the according to this gear, so that drops the other, what they're really saying is, theoretically, if you do one, two, one, two, meaning zigzag back and forth. So the first one should be good based on the two Hebrew ones that are underneath it. And this left side one should be good based on the two Greek ones underneath it. And even you could possibly say that if it was, let's say, switched around, you could do one Hebrew and one Greek together, or there's some way that maybe they think that could work. It's a little more complicated to understand that. But they say the following. In other words, it could be, let's say they were all, all on one side. It could work. To which they answer, Hatan is the Irish name Shirin. Actually, Zairi says they really are both good. So now they answer the following. What's the reason? Well, Tana Didan, why does our Mishnah think this is no good? Again, Dilma Gundalit Chati Mutlata Echad Bechad Echad. So now they say, again, since there's this zigzag back and forth, last time it was two and two, this is one, two, one, two. Again, we're worried that maybe the Greek, one of them maybe switched the order, in which case you could end up with three witnesses are signed under one and one witness is signed under the other. And that would basically be a problem because one get would only have one witness, but we don't know who switched their name and what. And therefore, again, because we started one way, maybe the other one copied the order, even though he was writing in Greek and he did it like the Hebrew order. And then everything would be, basically you'd end up with maybe we don't know. That's the whole point. We have no idea who these witnesses were and what they signed. And therefore, you might have three in one way, one in the other. And then one of the team would be no good. And therefore, we have to disqualify both of them because we don't know which one is no good. Okay, so that was the whole second section about this Greek witnesses signing on documents, right? Jewish witnesses signing documents in Greek, where the, again, if you go with the Rambam and some other commentaries, where the order is right to left versus left to right. And that causes... Right. In, th- in a particular case, we have two get side by side. That's going to create a whole problem. Now, and then again, which ones do we accept? Right. We said we're going to accept the first two at right, the right one based on the first two lines. But we're not going to accept the Greek ones because we're worried that since they had Hebrew above them, they might have messed up the order. Okay, But there is a, actually a makhluk. It's area with the Tanakama. The area actually says it's OK. New mission. Shir Miksat begins. We now have a get. It's written on two columns. And you leave over a little bit from the first column. You don't finish it up. You put it on the second column. And then the witness is signed at the bottom of the, the, the end of the second column, which is actually much higher up because there's not that many lines there. Okay, so he now signs on the second column by Ada Milamata, right there at the end of the document, meaning right, not down below, but at the end of those words there on the second column. Kashil, it works. You can assume those witnesses were on the entire thing, on the two columns. If witness is signed at the top of the page, or minatsad, or on the side of the page, or or on the back of it, beget pashut patsum, in a regular simple get, meaning not the one with all the folds, where we do sign on the back, which are really the folds, 
But in this case, it doesn't work. You can't sign on the back of the document or on the side or on the top. Let's say you have two gets written on the same piece of paper and you have one. So if you, let's say, fold the page in half and you start from the middle point, this one goes, right? If you kind of view it as, as folded. So each one, or let's say open it, each one is written going outward, okay? So one's written from the middle going down and one's written from the middle going up. And the witnesses are in the middle. Now, in the middle, it's at the top of both documents, really, because of the way it's written. It's no good because the witnesses have to be at the bottom of the document, not at the top. So let's say each one is facing in. You start each at the, at the edges of the page and go inward. So they each end in the middle of the page. So what if the signatures are in the middle there? So they say, well, one of them, the signature is going to be upside down. For the other one, it's going to read perfectly well. So the one it reads perfectly well for, it works. The one who's, it's, the signatures are upside down, it doesn't work. Okay, again, this is what we saw before. If the aiding, uh, sorry, if the get was written in Hebrew, but the witnesses, now again, this is not like the case before, because the case before I had two gets, one next to the other. This is just one get with some witnesses sign from right to left and some from left to right. So if it was written in Hebrew or all the Aedim, right? It was written in Hebrew from right to left, but the witnesses signed Yivanit, they signed Greek from right left to right, or Yivanit, or it was written Yivanit, but the witnesses were Hebrew. Eid echad ivri ve'ed echad Yivanit, or you have one and the other, or katab sofer ve'ed, this is a case we're going to talk about much more in tomorrow's daf, and we've seen this sugya before, if a sofer wrote it and there was one witness, kasher, it's valid. Ish ploni ate kasher. This is all a review. Oh, sorry about that. So these are the cases we saw before that were quoted in the previous Gemara. Ish ploni ate kasher. Ben ish ploni ate kasher. If you say your name, your first name only, it's good. If you say son of so-and-so, it's also good. You don't name, mention your first name, just your father's name. Ish ploni, as long as you say aid, right? In both those cases, you have to say is a witness. Ish ploni ben ish ploni, velo katav aid. But if you say, my name is this, son of this, and you don't say the word aid, that's also valid. Because the assumption is if you said, if you wrote it in that way, you meant that you were planning, to, that you meant to be a witness. And this is what the people in Jerusalem, the, the well-known or the, the people who are particular about things, they actually would do it in this way. They wouldn't necessarily write the word aid, I guess. Okay, that's what it seems to be referring to. And this is a little bit complicated. If you write a nickname for the husband or for the wife, it's good. Now, what do you mean? Didn't we learn Already in all those sugas, you have to write all their nicknames and all their names and all the names they're known by. Well, the Mishnah seems to be, according to Rashi anyway, there's different interpretations of this. Rashi says, Shem Levai Shel Kula. What he's saying is if you use a last name, like for example, my last name is Farber. I didn't say son of or daughter of, I just said Farber. That is enough uh, according to this in terms of writing in the get, okay, for the wife and for the husband. So we had all these cases in the mission. Now we're going to go back to the first one. If you leave over some, right, and as you don't finish on one column and you move over to the next column and the witness is signed at the bottom of that. To which the Gemara says, aren't, why are we worried that this is two different gets? Maybe there was a get on the right and a get on the left. And just what happened was, right, imagine the document. So we imagined it, right? There's a body of a text here. And then at the top of the column, on the second column, you have the end of it and the signatures. But maybe the get was bigger and on the right side, it went lower and there were signatures there. And on the left side, it went higher. And there was the whole text of a different someone else's get. And then these witnesses aren't connected with that first get at all. And maybe they cut the date of, right, the top of the left-hand get and the bottom of the first get of the right-hand one. Rabbi Abba says in the name of Rav, it must be that the page wasn't cut off right underneath. There was dead space at the bottom of the first column 
And that's why we're not worried. But if there was no dead space, then we really would be worried that maybe it was cut off. But wait, just because there's space at the bottom, what about the first, the next column? The next column could have had text above it on the left side and a whole nother get. Just because this one didn't finish here doesn't mean maybe they just never finished it. So again, they say, well, just like Rabbi Abba Amarab, Okay, so just like he just answered over there, it must be that there was space above and space below that was dead space that didn't have anything written, which then proves that they obviously didn't cut it because if they had cut it, there wouldn't have been that empty space. And that's how we can explain that case in the mission. Okay, with this, we'll finish our doc for today and see you all tomorrow.